FCC commercial element one question pool. Sub element D, other equipment. Six key topics, six exam questions. Key topic 19, antennas. What are the antenna requirements of a VHF telephony coast maritime utility or ship station? A, the shore or onboard antenna must be vertically polarized. Two, what is the antenna requirement of a radio telephone installation aboard a passenger vessel? B, the antenna must be vertically polarized and as non-directional and efficient as is practicable for the transmission and reception of ground wave waves over seawater. Three, what is the most common type of antenna for GM DSS VHF? D, none of the above. Four, what is the purpose of the antenna tuner? A, it alters the electrical characteristics of the antenna to match the frequency in use. Five, what advantage does a vertical whip have over a long wire? B, it radiates equally well in all directions. Six, a vertical whip antenna has a radiation pattern best described by C, a circle. Key topic 20, power sources. For a small passenger vessel inspection, reserve power batteries must be tested. D, at intervals not exceeding 12 months or during the inspection. Two, what are the characteristics of the reserve source of energy under GM DSS? C, must be independent of the ship's electrical system when the RSE is needed to supply power to the GM DSS equipment. Three, which of the following terms is defined as a backup power source that provides power to radio installations for the purpose of conducting distress and safety communications when the vessel's main and emergency generators cannot? B, reserve source of energy. Four, in the event of failure of the main and emergency sources of electrical power, what is the term for the source required to supply the GMDSS Council with the power for conducting distress and other radio communications? C, reserve source of energy. Five, what is the requirement for emergency and reserve power in GMDSS radio installations? D, all newly constructed ships under GMDSS must have both emergency and reserve power sources for radio communications. Six, what is the meaning of reserve source of energy? A, the supply of electrical energy sufficient to operate the radio installations for the purpose of conducting distress and safety communications in the event of failure of the ship's main and emergency sources of electrical power. Key topic 21, EPIRBs. Question one, what is an EPIRB? A, a battery operated emergency position indicating radio beacon that floats free of a sinking ship. Two, when are EPIRB batteries changed? B, after emergency use or within the month and year replacement date printed on the EPIRB. Three, if a ship sinks, what device is designed to float free of the mothership is turned on automatically and transmits a distress signal? A, an emergency position indicating radio beacon. Four, how do you cancel a false EPIRB distress alert? C, notify the Coast Guard or Rescue Coordinator Center at once. Five, what is the COSPAS-SAR-SAT system. B, an international satellite-based search and rescue system. Six, what is an advantage of a 406 megahertz satellite EPIRB? D, all of the above. Key topic 22, SARTs, in which frequency band does a search and rescue transponder operate? D, 9 gigahertz. 
How should the signal from a search and rescue radar transponder appear on a radar display? C, a series of 12 equally spaced dots. Three, what is the purpose of the SART's audible tone alarm? A, it informs survivors that assistance may be nearby. Four, which statement is true regarding the SART? D, this is a nine gigahertz transponder capable of being received by the vessel's X-band navigational radar system. Five, at what point does an SRT begin transmitting? C, if it has been placed in the on position, it will respond when it has been interrogated by a nine gigahertz radar signal. Six, how can a SART's effective range be maximized? B, the SART should be held as high as possible. Key topic 23, survival craft VHF. Question one, which statement is not true regarding the requirements of survival craft portable two-way VHF radio telephone equipment? C, operates simplex on channel 70 and at least one other channel. Two, which statement is not true regarding the requirements of survival craft portable two-way VHF radio telephone equipment? A, operation on channel 13. Three, with what other stations may portable survival craft trans transceivers communicate? D, all of the above. Four, equipment for radio telephony used in survival craft stations under GMDSS must have what capability? A, operation on channel 16. Five, equipment for radio tele telephony used in survival craft stations under GMDSS must have what characteristic? D, all of these. Six, what is the minimum power of the SCT? B, one watt. Key topic 24, nav text. Nav text broadcasts are sent B in categories of messenger, messages indicated by a single letter or identifier. Two, MSI can be obtained by one or more of the following. D, all of the above. Three, which of the following is the primary frequency that is used exclusively for Navtex broadcasts internationally? A, 518 kilohertz. D, what means are used to prevent the reception of unwanted broadcasts by vessels utilizing the Navtex system? C, programming the receiver to reject unwanted broadcasts. Five, when do Navtex broadcasts typically achieve maximum transmitting range? B, middle of the night. Six, what is the transmitting range of most Navtex stations? C, typically 200 to 400 nautical miles.